Netflix original content strategy is crushing rivals like Amazon. Welcome to this Emily Now vlog. As you know, if you've been following for a while, that from time to time, I like to take a headline that's out in my social feed and deconstruct it in hopes that an entrepreneur will find it valuable and that there's some takeaways there that an entrepreneur can use to figure out how to make their business more valuable. Uh, our goal this year is to try and help 100 entrepreneurs start, grow, or fix their business, ultimately helping entrepreneurs build valuable businesses. And so sometimes in order to build a valuable business, you need context or you need examples of other things that you can be doing. And so when I saw this particular article hit my social feed, I mean, there's just so much to talk about with Netflix that I thought I would dedicate an entire vlog episode to it. So here we go. The article, which you can you which you can read about by you know clicking the the link in the in the notes uh, for this episode, basically talks about the decision that Netflix made to get into original programming. Now, just to backtrack a little bit, whether you know it or not, Netflix is a business uh, that was started back in 1997, so it's more than 20 years old. And six years ago, they decided to pursue an original content strategy. Now, let's just paint the timeline a little bit. Netflix, this little company that starts delivering DVDs door to door for people. Blockbuster, a behemoth of a company. I don't know if you remember Blockbuster, but they were ginormous. Netflix, nothing to pay attention to. In fact, if, if, um, if you had even heard of them, you were lucky and fortunate. But Netflix, Reed Hastings in particular, the entrepreneur that, that started Netflix, you know, he obviously saw the, saw the future or saw the future that he wanted to create. And I think that's an important note for entrepreneurs that oftentimes we're prepared to just accept the variables that we have to work with and we try to make the most of them. But if you can take a minute to think about the variables in your business, you might be surprised at the ideas that come out in terms of where you think the business or the market for your particular product or service is going. And in the case of Netflix, Reed Hastings saw what was happening online, believed that one day streaming was going to be an option, but he needed to build a customer base. And so what did he do? He built a customer base of uh, homeowners or individuals that were prepared to order a DVD, have it sent to their house, watch it and send it back. I mean, that's a lot of work and a lot of friction when you can just simply go to Blockbuster uh, in your neighborhood, grab a movie and take it home. Well, he did that, but he created a client base off of it. And then they got into streaming and he was right. You know, the, the market moved that way. Netflix is arguably responsible for that. But in order to be able to deliver on that, they had to have a great service as well. So it wasn't just about a manila envelope with a DVD inside of it. It was an entire experience. It was a nice envelope. It had a logo on it. They made you feel important. They made it easy to deal with them. Customer service was really, really great. And so when streaming came along, they then took that same idea and moved it online and made sure that the app was easy to use, that the website was simple to use, that it was clean and it was crisp. And most importantly, if you were going to watch a movie that it wasn't kind of stop go stop go bandwidth uh driven you know sometimes when you know back in the day when you were watching streaming a lot of times you'd have to wait for it to buffer and then you could watch and then you'd have to wait for it to buffer and it was very frustrating so part of uh, the engineering at netflix was to make sure that they could stream a movie to you and have you watch it and have it be a pleasurable experience well the next iteration of that is now that you've secured your customer base now that you've secured distribution which is what netflix did now you got to start filling the pipe so instead of buying products from the movie business Netflix made the decision to do it themselves. Original programming. So six years ago, they started building their own content. They already had their own distribution channel, their online streaming service, and they already had their own customer base, monthly subscribers. So Netflix has now what, what we would refer to, they've taken over the, you know, pretty much the entire stack as it relates to people watching movies and, and, and consuming content, entertainment content online. Now, it's interesting to see what has happened as a result of that. So you've got a company like Amazon that is a retailer that has an online website that ships us socks and underwear and books and electronics and all of a sudden they realize, well, wait a minute, we have a pretty big customer base. Why don't we create the same type of service as Netflix? So now they've copied Netflix. And not only have they copied Netflix in terms of the streaming service known as, uh, as Amazon Prime or Prime or Amazon 
Prime TV, I think. Um, but they've also now gotten into the original content game. But they're doing it, not because they're the leader, because they're following the leader. So what does that mean? That means they're never gonna be as good at it as the leader of the time, who is right now Netflix and is by far leading the pack. So you've got a retailer who is now in the content original content creation business for movies. Then you've got these other things happening in like the old traditional businesses like Disney and Time Warner, et cetera. Now all of a sudden they're scrambling to figure out, well, where do we fit in in this new ecosystem? So Disney, which is a content creator from the very first day they started, they create movies and animations and so forth. They've now said, well, we're pulling our content from Netflix and we're gonna create our own streaming service. So now they, you've got Fox being purchased as I interpret it, in the having to figure out because of what Netflix readily having their eyes set on the is now trying to react and it's changing our world. Absorb content, it's uh, come up with new with um, that we're all benefiting from and so has been painted. What does this mean for your bit? Is that if your business is doing really the moment that you need to be thinking, symbolize it. Now this is not conventional thinking so if Listening, turn off the video or stop listening to the If you have enough history and if you have an it doesn't typically last for too long. And in things move very, very quickly. So the business and how confident you felt about it is no guarantee next year or five years from now. My figure out how to be a leader in a niche. You can have a really big market that you play in, but you've got to be the leader of your particular mean being the best provider I think it means also pushing the envelope on innovation and iterating a better experience to your customer with than anybody else because if you're doing that place along the lines of custom of customer else either has to follow you or do better than you and if, if they're gonna follow you that means you've got the lead and, and your profit margins will be higher um, and get ahead of you it means you you've now got a rival competition is healthy so if your business and everything's really great. I'm, I'm not really sure why, why I would say because you need to get your head around what your business in a business environment that inevitably now your business isn't going to look the way it looks different. Your costs are going to be different. The way you the only question is, are you going to that change or are you going to be the your margins shrink and ultimately your market? Shrink? Your business might really be in a bad spot. A contrarian, I would say, then that's the best business is really jammed up right now and life is what can you do with the product to create a better experience for the better in the marketplace and how do you get to work in a tough spot so the best a better business the worst thing stay where you are and you continue to figure out whether you're gonna either way whether you've got a great business out how are we how is our first place it means we're second means we're competing for thinner margins who's benefiting from higher margins and they're more valuable business. So whether a business is not growing, how do we use this moment place? And, and one way to experience that your customers have right now look like in the future, given advancements in technology, society and so forth, and then try to say, now how can we position ourselves to be the leader of these Netflix, Netflix believed to be consumed online? So customer base to deliver product or service full of integrity um, and experience and so when they then when when the world finally caught up and was streaming content and so six years ago they the rest of the market is scrambling to keep up with them whether that's the great thing about business you can never rest because you never really know what's around the corner but looking down the road at how your place what you know for sure is everyone else is and they'll only ever know what you've done not what you're going of you, in which case that would be a catalyst for you to compete with them and try to be better. So Netflix, original Amazon, it's a great art. You've heard me color it out or it's inspired you or encouraged you to go and make your business a mechanism by which you can do it. And some watching, if this is on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, get a chance to see this content. If you're or like it or share it um, because you can help another entrepreneur. And as you know, we're trying to help 100 of them this year, and we're trying to help 100 entrepreneurs. So um, again, thanks for connecting with you on uh, the next episode.